Here's another watercolor request. Uh, this person was watching Quick Tip 257, uh, one that I did painting shafts of light in, and as I have explained in other Quick Tips, I use the oil paint because it doesn't dry so quickly. It's easier to explain techniques and as compositional principles, which we work with so often. But she says here, um, most of your lesson concepts are easily transposed into watercolor, which is true. But this one, Shafts of Light, uh, is a real problem of mine. And I would absolutely love to see this lesson for watercolor. So let's do Shafts of Light with watercolor. The miracle of watercolor is that there's so many ways we can do one single thing. I know of several ways we can paint shafts of light, but I want to show you the one that's simplest, easiest to control, and perhaps down the road we might show you others. And that is, first of all, observe the shaft of light, shafts of light. Now, this is true whatever you're doing. Don't just think, I want to know how to, how to do shafts of light, so I will just do shafts of light without studying the shafts of light. What do, what do they actually do? We find that in watercolor, as well as in oils and other media too, a lot of time when you study the image, the image will tell you what to do. Now let's look at this photo I have of shafts of light. The image shows we can see some of the scene through the shafts of light. We can see images of trees in the background here, but they're very, very faint. That tells us one thing. Um, we can see that as those light rays are coming through, there are wide rays of light and then there are rays that are not, uh, they're, they're more narrow rays in most cases here, where they're not quite so light as the wider rays. In other words, those are shadow rays. See, another thing too, which is absolutely crucial in observing shafts of light, and that is these are not straight down, because they're, but, but they are angled. So you can see the as if the sun were right up here, we can see that angle bend. This is a deeper angle than this is. And you see as it goes up, it's sort of like a fan as it fans out. That kind of angle. And you'll notice that the shafts are wider. And this goes along with the angle. The shafts are wider at the bottom than they are at the top. So that tells us what we need. We need imagery. We need the same imagery here. You can see there's a tree here that is by, uh, in front of those shafts. So we see this tree clearly defined. All these others we see in various degrees of much lighter value because they're being affected by the light. Now that tells us what we need to do then. We need to be able to show the images, and but we really need to uh, have a way to show these images not quite so clear, and some of them are not clear at all. They're barely visible through all that light. Uh, we see this one's clearer because it's closer to us. Uh, there's uh, Some of the sun rays are coming in front of this image, and some of those rays are going behind. So those kinds of observations can tell you every time what you need to do. So one way, and what I find the easiest way uh, to do shafts of light is to begin paint the complete scene first. Now I have here uh, watercolor that was done some time ago and, and so I'm going to just use this and see we'll create some shafts of light. So how do we do that? First of all it needs to be totally dry. If it's not totally dry, if you, if, uh, you can lift shafts of light and it is a lift out method, you can lift shafts of light from wet paint but that's a different process. So let's just look at this process and how this works. So it has to be totally dry first. All the uh, paint should have settled down on the paper and be uh, would stay put if you do your hands over it like that. Now, the other thing is that we, we re-wet it. But we re-wet it gently. So I have two, um, two bottles of water. It's better to re-wet it with spray than it is to use a brush because if we use a brush we run, run the risk of loosening some of that paint. If we use a, a, a coarseness spray like this one 
it has so much power behind it, we run the risk of loosening little dots of color. So a fine mist spray. Now, this is a really good fine mist spray that just came out recently. It's, it's um, made by Delta. You see it right here. Made by Delta, and it's simply uh, called an ultra-fine mist water sprayer. Now, I'm sure everybody's going to go out and buy one of those, so Delta uh, needs to give me a... Oh, don't kick back on that. But I, these, by the way, are available right now at Blick Art Supplies online. So what I'm going to do is take this fine mist sprayer, and I'm going to give it a good wetting. I want it to be so wet that I see gloss. I want to see the whole surface glossy. So I just uh, continue. And it kind of you have to position yourself so that you can see the degree of glossiness, uh, else sometimes it's a little bit difficult. And if you don't get it wet enough, the process doesn't work. Only that, if you don't get it wet evenly, the process won't work. So that's what I'm up to right now. Just getting that thing evenly wet throughout. All right, so there's the first thing. Now, we're going to lift out light rays. We need relatively stiff brushes. Uh, the nylon brushes work best for this. The brushes that are made for acrylic painting, um, and some of these gesso brushes. This is this is a gesso brush that came from a craft store. It is uh, it's made of nylon or some sort of synthetic, but it's, it's relatively stiff. The the softer watercolor brushes won't do the job. So uh, you, these these are the brushes that work best for this. Um, you need to have paper towel in your hand. And paper towel available to blot with. So let's see how this works. Now I'm going to wet the brush. I'm going to start with this wide brush and I'm observing what these light rays are doing. Now this is going to be, require some scut work. So what I want to do is I want to angle. I'm going to create the angles first. So I'm just going to take this brush and I begin to pull it back and forth just like this and watch that. You can see the color come up when I pull it back and forth. It's going to pull it back and forth like that to establish the angle that I need. I said this angle will go this way. This angle will go that way. And I'm trying to look at the reference here to see how those angles bend. Because this is going to be my guide right here. You can see the color comes up. Periodically rinse that brush off. And let's see what's happening at the top. I can, I'm just going to go ahead and take that whole top area off and you can see when I'm working this back and forth like that you see the images disappear and it begins to feel like light keep going that one thing is when you're doing this you the movement needs to be absolutely straight if you let that movement curve it's going to curve your light rays so I, I can get started right there that was my guide let's take off more here so I'm just going to move it back and forth like this and, and I can Move it into that other little shaft there. Let the brush, rinse the brush off. I'm gonna let the brush absorb that. There we go, like that. Now keep going, keep going, keep going. Now see, when you're reaching, when you're doing these really long rays like this, uh, you, you have to really watch your, your movement because the temptation is to curve it, which I almost did there, but you have to have total control. The movement has to come from your shoulder. You have to be in total control of making that line go straight. Now we know these rays are going to bend. Go all the way to the top there. These rays are going to bend as they come around. So just give it a good scrubbing because that watercolor is on there pretty good. And uh, the longer the watercolor is on there, uh, the more tenacious it is to the paper. So you'll find if you if this is a watercolor painting that you just finished, it, there's less work. Uh, the one I'm working on right now has uh, I did. Um, I think this one is about 11 years old. So that shows you uh, that you go back at least 11 years and probably longer than much. I know you can go back longer than that to put in light rays, shafts of light uh, in any painting you wanted to. So I'm just going to keep working it. Now I'm going to stop right here and go ahead and blot areas I've already where I've already loosened the paint. So I'll just take some paper towel and 
give this a good firm blot and rotate it. Now watch that light come up as I blot it. You see it begins to feel like shafts of light as we blot. The more we blot, the stronger the shafts of light. Now, if I didn't want if, if if I didn't want the shafts of light to be quite so dramatic as the reference, I don't have to make it quite so dramatic because you see the sunlight, you see shafts of light, uh, some are fainter and some are more dramatic. So uh, I'll put just a little bit more, so I'm not going to take it to the degree of that, but it is possible, especially if you uh, if you did the painting the day before and the paint is fresher on the paper, you can lift those shafts of light out right to the very, almost the white of the paper, especially if you're using non staining colors. Now I'm re-wetting, because I don't want it to dry yet, I'm not ready for it to dry yet, so I'm re-wetting. Uh, and we're going to do just a little bit more lifting. I think you probably already have the idea of how you can make this work because you see it already working here. Let's get a little bit stronger light. I said this is coming this way, so I need to come in this direction right here. We'll just work and let it come right in front of this tree. Pull it right in front of that foliage right there. Now I'm pulling in front of that foliage because I want to show you a little bit something else. When we finish this part, now go ahead and blot. Once you get the major direction established, then you can pretty much decide where you want those shafts to go. So I'm going back to the water. And let's see what we're going to have here. Now, now I want to give this a good scrubbing because I want a good, strong. But don't be tempted to do this because then you'll get curved light rays. You don't want curved light rays, but also be cautious that you're moving it in a direction that it makes sense from the direction that we see those rays moving right there. Now I'm going to go ahead and blot because I want to have a little bit more control. We'll see what I'm doing. So I'll just get some more light up. Blot. Okay, and I'm going to go in with a, with a smaller brush now and pull out some uh, really stronger light rays within that within these passages of right of light rays. So just it's important that you blot now at this point. Important that you blot almost immediately, but, uh, so that 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 um, color that you pulled out doesn't sink back in and make the whole thing muddy. I can hear that question coming already. So and just be sure that your direction each time as you're lifting these rays out, just be sure that your direction is consistent. And that the angle that you're moving your brush is consistent with the angles of the rays that you're in the area of rays that you're in. Let's see, how does that look? Okay, you've got a good bit of light pulled out there. I want to pull out just a little bit more right up here because I want to show you then what you can do to enhance. There we go. Let's pull out just a little bit more right up there. We'll show you what you can do now to enhance those rays. So you can see now, if I really want to give it some uh, muscle, I can keep going and I can keep lifting. Uh, the other thing is, I'm not going to show you right here, but just tell you that uh, once this dries, you can also use some fine sandpaper. If, if there are areas you want to pull out a little bit lighter, you can use fine sandpaper for that. But what I want to show you here is that you can enhance that feeling of light rays by having something like this. If you have a scene where you have a tree or foliage or something that is actually uh, in front of the rays, the rays are behind, you know, something I've sort of seen like we have right here, then you can put that in. I'll show you, put that in after this dries. Now, I don't know, this is probably not dry enough. It's not dry enough, so it's going to go in, uh, it's going to go on, go in a little bit. Uh, a little bit soft edge, but maybe that'll be all right. So what I'm do there, I'm going to pull out. I'm going to my Daniel Smith Sap Green here, right here. Pull out to get that in a good rich mixture without very much water at all. And then let's see what this is more of a blue green. So I'm going to reach into ultramarine blue here, and 
put it beside the Daniel Smith sap green and let's put let's put a little bit of violet in that to have the ability to get a little bit more of a shadow uh, ability for shadow so I'm going into the carbazol violet right here okay now let's see what we can do there if we go on to wet and damp this is the other thing about watercolor every brush stroke you put on um, how wet the paper is wet to dry wet damp dry wet degrees of dampness dry those are the degrees that are going to affect how the color goes on here then you go to the palette it's how wet how much water the water is your white so how much water in the brush how much water on the palette how much water uh, what's the proportion of water per paint water to paint that you pick up and go here on this that's the reason people find watercolor so difficult it's not really once you get the hang of it um, but that all those things we take in consideration when we are painting in watercolor so I'm, you see I'm just taking this green and kind of getting it very very I'm re deepening it and and uh, 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 lowering the saturation just a little bit and let's go back over here now and let's see if I just there we go oh good that's going to be that's going to the soft edges that the damp paper is going to give us there are to our advantage and let's see we're going to I'm referring to this tree over here so this is going to this is totally in shadow this trees in front here is totally in shadow so we just make it totally in shadow and I'll pull uh, put enough of that in so then you can see let's pull this right on it make it make sense so then you can see how having something that's not within the light rays in the scene can enhance that feeling of light rays. And I'm going to pull this branch out just a little bit further here so that we can see it in front of the light rays. And then we'll just take it right up in here like this. Okay. Let's do that some more. And I'm going to extend it a little bit further out here. So, so that we, I can enhance that feeling of light rays you see as it's coming down. Now just let it blend in with what's already there. Okay, you see I'm not adding water to this at all. Okay, what, what are we going to have? Oh, we'll let this stick, we'll let this branch, let's go ahead and let it stick out. Now that one's pretty wet right there. That's the reason that went lighter because it's wet. And let's see if we can get just a little bit darker. And I think it really works well for that edge to be softer. So just pull that right on up and let it join. We'll just let it kind of join this branch right up here. Like that. Now we're beginning to feel that light rays, those light rays behind uh, behind this tree. We don't need to... Uh, uh, if we overdo that, it will look overdone. So I'm just going to... Uh, sort of work what I'm doing here on down just a little bit and um, maybe we'll be we'll have just a little bit of just a little bit of um, foliage in front of this tree to show that this tree is behind this one just a little bit like that and I said do I need it well it wouldn't hurt to have its neighbor have a little neighbor right here kind of uh, not much just a little bit suggestion now just, now just make that feel that it belongs and because we don't want our viewer to know that there were uh, 11 years between <laughs> when the original painting was done and when we put the light rays in so there are your light rays have fun with that you might even practice it both with paintings that were uh, where you when you do a painting the day before or when you paint uh, when you you might be able to pull some old paintings that didn't quite work and by having shafts of light in them uh, you can actually create a new painting from it so give that a try be sure and view all of our quick tips and while you're doing so subscribe to the channel click on the bell so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip which is every week and if you have a question leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you also take a trip over to dyingmize.com where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, 
lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.